Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another episode of Explode Your Expert Business Show. And today I'm here with the one and only Mark Pitcher. How are you doing, Mark? Hi, really good. Really good, Simone. Thank you for having me. Okay, before we get started, tell me about your hair. Like, I got. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> let's, let's, let's talk, let's, let's start with serious things. Yeah, uh, um, it is real. Um, yeah, it's uh, sometimes I get all sorts. I get, uh, Mark, you look like you've been electrocuted. Uh, someone told me I look like the lead singer from the Sex Pistols uh, or Tintin. Um, yeah, I have a receding hairline actually. It's actually gradually going back. Mm -hmm. um, so while I've got it, I just, um, I just, uh, I, it happened by accident and then someone commented <laughs> on it. So now I've gone mad with it. It's <laughs> I, you know what I, I can feel you i think we're we brothers with this uh, um i've got like uh, i've got my hair I, like they're leaving but i'm like yeah. as long as i have them and they still got my curls i'm just gonna grow them yeah. and i'm uh, um my wife is scared that i'm going to grow a mullet that, that's not the uh the, i'm not gonna go there but i did i used to have really long hair i said you know what now that i still got them Let's yeah. make use of them. Exactly. And then we finally... Well, same as you in the 80s, I had the mullet and then I went... Did you? The <laughs> in the 90s, it was all down here. Now it's the bald patch on the top. There is a bald... <laughs> a bit of wax, you know? <laughs> All right. Well, uh, I guess uh, I'm, I'm happy we started with the serious things. Um, uh, you do uh, an incredible work. I think I came across uh, your podcast uh, where you interviewed my good friend Kapil, which is actually was in, uh, as well um, a guest a couple of times on, on the show. Yeah. So if you can tell us a bit more about uh, uh, what you're up to, uh, that would be a great starting point, like the things that you do at the moment. Well, yeah, sure. I mean, I'll, perhaps I should... I'll tell you what I, you know, usually do and then what I'm doing right now, which is like the rest of the world, you know, a bit less than I was. Um, well, it's different, actually, it's different. So, so I, um, I basically, uh, my mission in life, my purpose is to, is to help people um, who've been punched in the face by life, you know, and um, really you know, so you can call it, I call it smash the box. Um, a lot of us put ourselves in a mental box based on what's been said to us or what's happened to us in our lives. Um, some people or the society puts us in a box, our friends and family put us in boxes. Um, and I'm all about helping people come back from whatever it is that's happened in their life. So I'm talking, it could be as mild as I'm just a bit stuck. Um, and I need a bit of a nudge back on track. I call it like a mental toolkit, um, but it can be as extreme as, you know, bereavement, divorce, you know, abuse, something, you know, that's really, really held or holding a person back and really give them the mental toolkit to, based on my own experience and the, and the, the, the models and the tools and techniques I've learned and qualified in, to really help them back on, A, back on track, almost think of it as a lifeboat service you know if you're drowning you know you've got to get them out of the water and onto land and then give them tools and techniques that they can really build something um and really to be happy again and fulfilled and which could be you know to use that adversity and turn it into a strength which could be to create a business from it but it might not be it might just be to function normally to be happy again to be you know it could it can be all any of those things and you know, some people call that life coaching. Um, I, I don't necessarily refer to myself as that, but I am, I'm a, you know, I'm qualified in coaching and NLP and I use those techniques sometimes in my work. Um, yeah. But it's all about helping people who've, um, who've really, as I say, been punched in the face by life and um, helping them really use it and not just survive, but thrive, really thrive and, and prove that you can smile again and you can, you can still be happy. And, and, you, can wear cra and you can wear crazy hairstyles. And, <laughs> and you can wear a crazy hairstyle and you can be whoever you want and use it. Just use it. Uh, so uh, how, did you end up, uh, how did you end up doing this line of work? Okay, so the, the short version is, um, and it's easy to look at it with hindsight now. So for years and years, I had a fairly... I'm going to say classic traditional working life. You know, I, I got involved in a startup tech business with four other guys. Oh yeah. God. Almost 20 years ago. 
and we grew this and we went on this journey with this business and it was a bit bumpy at the start but when it, it was a success story you know we sold the business twice we were you know we started five of us it was 500 when i left wow you know we sold it twice wow. made some money from it you know it was what company good. what field was that in it was in technology in the hospitality sector wow. okay what, what kind of service were you providing um so without boring you it was basically like a an internet-based platform to help mm -hmm. hotels restaurants bars um make more money really you know like control their costs of, of labor and food and costs and all their other costs and, and uh, that, that's not boring i got a catering background that's why i was asking so okay. i was well, using i was using the systems uh, i used to manage restaurants before um that was my background before so that's why yeah. I, when you said catering and technology i'm like huh Okay. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, like, sorry. back back in the day, I mean, it seems funny to say it now, but we launched at a time when, you know, the internet wasn't, it, people had computers at home, but it still wasn't fully trusted as a business tool. So there were lots of Excel spreadsheets around yeah. and yeah. lots of very expensive, big, heavy duty systems that most of these hotels and restaurants couldn't afford. Um, and we kind of, the internet was the boat that we sailed out on and said, look, this is the way forward. And we made it affordable and we made it work. And, That's and, it, and it makes a good story. And, a, you, know, I, you know, I've done a few yeah. after dinner talks on how we did it and all that stuff. That's great. But my, my moment of um, my life changing moment, my punch you in the face moment came in July 2016 when um, I took a phone call to find out that I'd lost my eldest son, Charlie, to suicide. He'd taken his own life and mm -hmm. um it was very early in the morning when i took the call um remember it as clear as day uh, it was a day much like today beautiful hot sun you know sunny day and everything's everything all the lights went off Simone. just everything changed in an yeah. instant and um it was a bit of pretty dark place for a while i'm not gonna lie but um i just made some choices I made some choices and I started from a place of deep gratitude that, okay, I need to be, I, I can get angry at the world. Like this can define me yeah. or I can use this. And I thought I'm going to use this, this, this feeling, this, whatever you want to call it, this pain, this grief. And a load of people are going to benefit from it. And I went off on this journey and all I had literally was I want to help people and make an impact. And I came up with Smash the Box, um, and off I went. And I had, you know, and I was coaching, and I was NLP, and I was doing lots of anything I could possibly could to help people, and speaking in public, and doing all these things. And you know, that's where it was born. It was born out of a raw desire to to a fairly unorthodox one. You know, there was no master plan to sort of take over the world or anything. Right, like just that. I want to help. I know, yeah. I, I know the situation. I know it sucks. And it's Other people are like this. But exactly. Yeah. So since going back to the start at the top of the interview, you know, it's that whole what I've I guess what I've done is and you know, yes, coaching, yes, or yeah, yeah. You know, got, got the qualifications, but don't it's not about that. For me, I what I that that's an element of it, and there's business experience and such. Sure. But what I've really done is dissected what did I go through? What did I what did I need to do? to get myself from that dark place to where I am now, where I can laugh and joke with you about wacky hairstyles and help people. And it's not an easy journey, but if you're ready for it, um, mm. and some of it's practical and some of it's physical and some of it's emotional and some of it's spiritual, um, but there's all these different elements. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm not trying to be a guru and say, this is the way. I have too much respect for people and for that. But, um, but what I have got is something that um, is... Is a way. Helping people. <laughs> is, okay. is, is definitely a, is, might not be the way, but it's a way. It's a way. Uh, and then they can, they can see. I want, I want to ask you, how long did it take for you to get back on your feet after um, your son passed? Um, yeah, it's a great question. And, and I'm going <laughs> to answer it in a in perhaps may not be the way you expect i'm on that journey every day mm -hmm. so i'm i'm not standing here going i'm healed i have all the answers everyone don't worry i can fix you not at all um i'm i'm on my own journey with that however um in simple terms i to get myself to a point where i could 
function and go business and I can you know laugh at a joke again and and to that point um and function really I think pretty quickly really but I it's sort of um it started off as a move away from thing I was using this pain and this grief that was very raw and going, right, how can I use this? And it was almost like a, I was fueled by that. Okay. It was driving me that it was, so in that sense, it was a move away from mm -hmm. uh, thing going forward. Um, but I've, you know, I've been on my own journey. I'm still on my own journey of, of sort of healing of that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Which means I also, you know, like all good coaches will tell you, you need to have something to move towards as well. So I was still, even at the, I'm happy to say, even at the start of Smash the Box, still carrying this weight. And I still do. Mm. I think the best way to answer your question is to say, I carry the, the weight of my grief with me every day. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Some days it's heavier and some days it's lighter. Um, but my, and my journey is all about making, my personal journey is all about yeah. making it lighter. Making I, it lighter. I see, I see what you mean. It's really um, like, I think it's so important what you're saying right now, because uh, we, if we make it, if we take this example and apply this to humanity, whatever people are going through, you had your grief, other people have other kind of griefs mm -hmm. and we all deal in different ways. Mm -hmm. And sometimes uh, it's still there. And uh, one of the problems is then when uh, we deny it's there. And I've been really good at that <laughs> for many years, many, many years. Mm. Actually, I'm still really good at that, which I need to remember, hey, I still got these things going on. Uh, but it's really fascinating on, and really important to say, you know what, it's there. And it might go away, it might never go away, but what can I do with this? And it is, uh, I think, even more important this conversation at this particular time, because uh, people are going through train to changes. People are going through griefs. They lost people. Yeah. Um, not only due, corona, due to coronavirus, they lost because of other reasons as well. Mm. But at the moment, that's what's what people are talking about. Mm. And as well, a lot of businesses shutting down. Yeah. You know, people that have been working their entire life blood sweat and tears to build something and from one day to the other bang yeah close yeah and i know a lot of in in, in our field like the speaking like, i know a lot of great professional speakers that have been speaking for 20 years they didn't have an online side of the business because they were super booked on on, on the live side and now from one day to the other bam everything shuts down yeah uh they had to go back uh, finding finding a, finding a job at Tesco because that's it. It was on the one of the only place that was hiring uh, in in their in, in their town. So, how is, is someone is going through a period of grief, a period of change, a dark moment? Uh, what would you recommend as a first step based on your own experience on how you dealt with it? Uh, feel it, let it in, lean into it. Uh, accept it you know I mean if you look at you, you, know, you could google it in five seconds you know they'll talk about there's the classic stages of grief you know mm -hmm. the, the shock denial anger bargaining acceptance and you know my experience is you can experience all five of those in about in three minutes you know <laughs> uh, it's not a linear thing there's no textbook for it um, I think you're absolutely right to draw a parallel between what's going on right now and grief. I think it is a form of grief. We are all mourning the loss of something. Could be somebody, obviously, if you've lost a loved one, you know, my heart goes out to you. But it's the loss, it's a change, and it, and it's, and, uh, and it has the shock element to it. Um, and what would I recommend? You know, look, I, so I, the best way I can answer that is um, I, there's two aspects to my work. There's what I call the universals mm -hmm. and then there's the uniques. So when I talk about a mental toolkit and a, and a pro, so I, which I've put into a program and people can follow and, and, and such like that's the universals. That's like, okay, here's some things you could do. Um, for some people, 
it might be they need to start taking action they need to start you know their 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 therapy their way of coping is to go right what am i good at plan uh right next step uh vision this new 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 project new plan yeah. and that works for them and they love the the sort of goal setting habit new habits new rituals element of what i talk about yeah. in my work for other people it might be do nothing do nothing mm -hmm. just just pause reflect meditate go for a run, you know exercise do the opposite let mm -hmm. you know it could be the opposite and that's the more sort of reflective reframe reframe what's going on different for different people um some people might start to question their purpose in life and and go straight there straight into into that and go right i need to explore that so there are different steps for different people um the unique bit so that's all can you know you could i could put all that out in a lovely diagram and go here are you know seven things yeah um and some of that will resonate with some people um i the unique bit is it's only when you get one-on-one -on -one with a person really whether that's in a in a session or that you really get under the hood of what drives them so my advice for anybody is mm. always tailored to where they're meeting them where they're at yeah if someone came to me and said look oh you know i've lost my business da, 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 what should i do i'm i'm Mental, my mental health is suffering what should i do before i answer that i there's a few things about that person i'd want to know yeah and yeah. about you know their life before and what they're experiencing right now and how they're feeling and what's what their self-talk is like and where they want to go and do, are they just so it's about like making assumptions of okay just because i got these tools it doesn't mean that this yeah. is what you need right now so i need to know a bit more so then i can give you the the best tool for you in your situation yeah it's like somebody saying what's the best car Get, suggest me a car to drive <laughs> and i will say well i i will say i'm from maranello i'll suggest yeah. ferrari. <laughs> you say ferrari but i would say well where, what do you want to do with the car where do you go well i want to go over land i'm doing this over ah right so i need to find you a car that yeah. is equipped for that you know? yeah, yeah 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 you know or i want to go west great anywhere in particular you know, <laughs> it's, it's you know it's all you know until you get yeah, into the, yeah, that's yeah. why i love q a so much probably one of the favorite things i do i do a lot of and i've been doing a lot of it during this coronavirus lockdown is live q a because with live q a mm -hmm. um you really get under the skin of where people are at and then you can give them great great tips and um yeah, i was uh, i was looking at this is a really powerful um i, I, I was having a conversation with uh, with a few friends recently uh, and uh, we were talking about, you know, mental health. Uh, we were talking mm -hmm. about how we deal with things. And, uh, and in fact, we realized that between, we were three of us and we know each other from pff, since we were children um, uh, in, in Italy. And then we ended up finding uh, each other here like in random ways um, in London. Yeah. Um, it, random. <laughs> but yeah, we were like super best friends um, when we were you know, in our teens. And we're all coping in a different way. Like my way of coping with this situation is work harder, create more projects. In fact, I hired uh, someone to help me really understand how I'm feeling about certain things because I have a tendency of shut down my feelings and just be a freaking machine. Like if I want something, I'll, I'll work my ass off until I get it. Like I've got a stable personality. I'm gonna, I, I'm in, uh, nothing can stop me which then the downside is I can neglect the internal side of my being for the external side, for the output. And so I need people to slow me down and actually help me reconnect. Hey, what's your heart saying right now? How are you really feeling about it? Yeah. And uh, there are different solutions for different people. Now, some, uh, I, had, I hired a healer. Some people need something more like a coaching base. Some people that might need just a therapist to go and have some therapy or counseling. So, and I think that right now the great, the great thing, and that's why I want to open this parenthesis that we have in this time, even if you are struggling, don't think that everything is too expensive to access. Yeah. Because there are a lot of people that are, you know, giving away their services uh, um, at a discounted rates. There are a lot of people that are doing this for, for charity, for supporting. Um, of course, if you got the money, pay for it. <laughs> because, you know, you're working with people that that's their business. Yeah. So, but at the same time, 
there is so much support out there that the worst thing you can do is not to get support. Yeah. Then how much you pay, what programs you join, then what kind of things you do, that's up to you. you. You know your money, you know financial situations, but I think it's important right now as a self-discovery process to get, yeah, get I, through it. I think you're right. And I think it's self, for me, it's self-awareness. Actually, if mm -hmm. you'd asked me that question and, we, and said, Mark, you've only got 10 seconds, I'd just go, right, get to know yourself. Yeah. Just take yeah, yeah. the time to, to, to know how am I experiencing this? Because I gave you an answer, which was, you know, you said to me, what should people do? And there's different things. I'm not going to stand here and go, everyone should meditate or everyone yeah, should yeah. set goals or everyone should, not at all. If you ask me, Mark, picture, what do I do? Yeah, what do you do? Yeah, that's what I'm curious. Yeah, my habits and rituals are really, really important for me. And, and in fact, they, they have been uh, for a long time, but even more so now. So that structure around a little bit of exercise, a bit of meditation, you know, and um, yeah, spending time with, I have a spiritual healer that I spend mm -hmm. time with um, and making sure I get, I'm in balance and balancing that with the practical side of being at home with a seven year old and, and you know, my wife who's working as well. And so there's all this sort of, but it's for me balance, you know, get to know yourself. What balance do I need that will allow me to experience this in at the very least, in, 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 you know, in a way that I'm going to be okay. My mental health is, you know, managing it. And at, and at the best, like, wow, you know, maybe actually this is the best thing that ever happened to me. And who knows? And that might be a little bit too much for some people, but yeah. it's, it's how you choose to experience it. And it, I, I go back to choice. Yeah. yeah. It probably sounds a bit harsh because if somebody has an illness or that, that they need help with counseling, I totally respect that. You know, mental health is, it's a serious thing. And if you're, and you, you need, some people need medication and you know, totally respect it. But if you are able to start working on your self a little bit to think about your thoughts and how you start your day and how, what energy it's the questions you ask yeah. yourself. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. What question, you know, what energy am I going to bring today? That kind of stuff. Then you can actually make a choice despite the hardship yeah. to experience it in a different way. I, I totally agree with you. Totally agree with you. Um, I, I, the, my initial reaction, for example, to this situation is, that, oh my God, opportunities. Because that's what my brain is wired to find. Mm -hmm. Find opportunities, find gaps, find new things. Mm -hmm. That's what, where I thrive. Mm -hmm. And that's how I reacted. And for me to enjoy this, which I, what I loved about it, this whole situation in a personal way, mm -hmm. uh, was uh, the fact that we had to reinvent and recreate a lot of things that we are doing. No, we run almost 200 events a year, live events. So that ain't happening. Uh, <laughs> we had almost to like, reschedule about 120 to 150 events or in, in a week yeah. uh, and turn them into online training uh, with the corporate side of the business and so on. And uh, <laughs> for me, it was exciting. <laughs> it was just really exciting. And people say, are you crazy? There are people that are dying. You're not compassionate. Like, I, I can imp I can see what's happening in the world and that makes me sad. But at the same time, I can choose what to focus on. Yeah. And I had people that passed away that were close to me due to this situation. I grieved for them. I'm sorry to hear that. Uh, but at the same time, I can choose what to focus on. And uh, I think that's really important for everyone to understand because the more time, uh, you, 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 you said it right, depending on how you are as a personality, how you are as a person, sometimes to deal with situations better, you will have to create a new project to keep yourself busy. And that's your healing mechanism. That, that's for mine, for me. I, I couldn't stand still and meditate in a period of crisis like this. That would be the death. Like I would just become a freaking vegetable. Um, and that's why I even turned, like, I only turn on Netflix about once every two weeks uh, to watch the Michael Jordan documentary at the moment because I'm, I'm a basketball fanatic uh, and a play. Yeah. But I don't want to go to go down the Netflix, the Netflix rabbit hole because otherwise I know I'm just going to be sucked in there and stop. So, yeah. No, listen, I hear you. And I think uh, absolutely we all deal with it in our, in our own way. And um, I'm, I'm a big believer in energy and tapping into uh, 
uh, and and it might not be for everybody but you know what energy am i feeling right now so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And i th i believe in energy shifts um so without overthinking it and going too far down that hole you know for example april for me was a very doing month i was doing a lot a lot of this yeah. Um, yeah. lots of interviews lots of like me interviewing other people being interviewed uh really head down doing a lot of work ha adjusting at the same time to the whole you know new yeah. routine at home yeah. homeschooling and all that stuff and not always getting it right um and that worked for me for April, but then I don't know. I just felt this energy shift in coming into May that I thought, mm, I think I need to slow down a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, I think I need to, you know, just repair a little bit. And I just, and intuitively have, you know, so actually this is the first thing I've done like this in, in, in the new month of May. And I just, um, yeah, I uh, said no to a few other things actually. And interestingly, I just sort of, and that's just me. And that, sure. it's that oxygen mask analogy of, you know, many people will have heard this, you know, if you're on an airplane with young children and they, you have the safety briefing, don't you? And they say, in the event of an emergency, place your own oxygen mask yeah. on for helping infants. And at the, I, I remember years ago, I could never understand that. I thought that's a bit selfish. Um, and now I get it, you know, because it's like, well, of course, because you need to be okay if you're going to be okay for other people as well so yeah uh, exactly is a to and you know it takes time it takes time it takes a, a very high level yeah of self-awareness to um to get to this point when you're saying okay this is what i need and be okay with that because that's the other part sometimes yeah. we can understand what we need and then we can go up but ah oh, no i'm not gonna do it and prioritize your external world uh, compared to the internal world. I mean, I'm saying this because I'm just a, like the perfect example of that. I, I really like need people to say stop and slow me down. Um, and uh, uh, it's, it's again a constant reminder. And it's not that I don't know what I need, but then it is a moment where it's like, oh, let me prioritize something else. So let me prioritize something else. There's always something else coming up. Mm. And it's that awareness of saying, you know what? I mean, it, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay if I slow down or if it's okay if I split up. <laughs> and actually, it's a really interesting point because for, for many people, this kind of thing is a private journey and they maybe they don't want to mm. share with anybody else or just close people. And I'm saying this as a coach. So I'm very, normally people, people anyone watching this podcast who, who knows me already, you know, um, or has seen me on social media, you know, I'm very, I bring lots of energy, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I have my own group and I, I, I look to inspire them and I would say lead them, but you know, I call myself the chief heart officer to bring, to really bring mm. inspiration and energy as much as I can. And I think, so there's a public profile there and I, those two for me have to be in alignment. So it's, I don't, I would never want to be, it's a bit like the, you know, the tears of a clown where you're out front going, Hey everyone, da -da, come on. Mm -hmm. And then privately you're a mess. So I, I that's yeah. why I'm happy to share what I'm sharing with you publicly, because I think it's, you can still show up and inspire people. Even if you're having a bad day, I call it, you know, right. you know, having a good bad day. So I'll sometimes show up to my, in my group and say, well, yeah, today's a bit of a tough one actually, but, um, but Hey, what are we going to do with that? What are we going to do with that? Someone's going to benefit from this and just flip it. And then yeah. just through doing that, sometimes you can lift your own. And then you, you have a better day. <laughs> it all becomes like a, a virtuous circle, you know, so rather than going and pretending that everything's great and, you know, when it's, yeah. when I find that people resonate with you more if you do that, I think. I, I totally agree with you. Totally with you, 100%. So we're now going into the part of the, the final part of the interview, which is called uh, Lifting the Veil. Uh, I'm, going, I'm not going to ask you to take your shirt off. Don't worry about that. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I'll ask always all my guests to share uh, a tool. Yeah, you don't app. want to lose viewers. <laughs> uh, well, or gain viewers. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe there is someone that will subscribe because of that. <laughs> and someone that will say, I will never see this podcast again. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? A new direction for me. Yeah. <laughs> but we're not gonna do it. We're not gonna do it. We're not gonna we're not gonna take the risk. <laughs> uh, but it's the part of the interview where I ask all my guests to share an app, a tool, a book, a practice, a service that they've discovered recently that made a positive impact in their life or their business. Uh, yeah. so what what's that for you? Wow, that's a great question. Um so you've 
you've caught me at, I'm just going to answer it as as in terms of what comes right now um, you know if you, as I say we're always, we're always on a journey all of us and I something that's been very transformational for me it's it's, it's actually a service that somebody else provides and I'll talk about that person right now and I'm, I, by the way when I say this I'm in no way uh, associated with this business it's another business but there's a lady that I see called Delilah Sullivan mm -hmm. uh, you can find her on Instagram I think she's on there as Delilah Sullivan uh, she's a spiritual guide and healer uh, she works with energy and um, she, I, her work I have found hugely transformational uh, for me personally and it's something uh, and she's you know she's not um it's not a big corporate thing you know uh, it's just her doing her thing um but if anybody is interested in i i guess so back to self-awareness and knowing yourself so some people straight away will go yeah not my cup of tea yeah. but there are there's more than one way i believe to to improve your mental health well-being state and you've mentioned some of them. So some people might be like, I need counseling. Some people, I need a therapist. Actually, I need a coach who's very practical and is gonna give me business tools and things. And there's, you know, there's all of those out there. But actually energy um, and almost, I always say to people, don't overthink it, don't challenge it, just experience it. And you can do this, we, you know, we do calls over Zoom at the moment. And just, I've just found it very, very powerful. Yeah. Um, and some of it I don't understand, um, but I don't need to. I just go based on how I feel, and I it found works. it. It's another. It's added another dimension. Yeah. You know, so this. You know, look, I've got a coach. I have a coach who coaches me on practical tools and tips, and she's brilliant. For me, she's the best coach in the world. Mm -hmm. um, um, but you need different things at different times, sure. and right now. Um, because this is unprecedented, it might be a time where people think, you know what, what have I got to lose? <laughs> what have I got I'll to try. lose? Yeah. You'll try. You know, it's a bit like, a bit like meditation. If you've never meditated before, <clears throat> um, now might be a time to go, you know what, I'm going to give it a go. Or I've never mm -hmm. hired a coach before. I've never, you know, whatever that your thing is. So I'm going to talk about that because that's very prevalent for me right now. And I found it very powerful. Others might not. Delilah Sullivan, she's on uh, probably Instagram is the best place to catch her. Um, and she has a podcast, um, which I, I think it's all in her name, Delilah Sullivan. She, she has these healings and she's uh, a spirit guide. And just that's that for me right now um, is, is I, I could have, there's tons of things, but that's probably the, the biggest one right now. Oh, that's brilliant. Delilah Sullivan, the uh, um, founder on Instagram. There are going to be also the links in the show notes. Yeah. As uh, Mark said, there Delilah is no... Sullivan Energy, I think it is, yeah. Uh, as Mark said, uh, there is no affiliation, uh, no association. No, no, with, uh, she's great. I say something we, we will always say because uh, is, these are resources that we find useful and we want to share. That's and it. By, and by the way, Simone, um, so th the reason I know her is so um we have a, a mutual friend in common we didn't know each other before mm -hmm. um, and i just interviewed her recently on my podcast which i'm right. looking forward to welcoming you on uh very soon that's not out yet but it will be released sometime in the summer probably in about six weeks time or so so even if people are just curious at this stage yeah uh they might want to listen to the podcast in a few weeks if they if, if they want to follow that the smash the box podcast and they will then get a feeling for her and i you know it was one of those moments where you know you're interviewing somebody in your experience of this and, and i was sort of interviewing her thinking of the audience focusing on her thinking uh i think i need some of this you know yeah <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah interest I, I had this moment as well yeah. when i was like oh i might actually hire you right now <laughs> <laughs> I had the goosebumps moments, yeah. While I was interviewing her, we stopped the interview. We finished it. it was a, it's a love. It's a beautiful interview, and um, <laughs> can't wait to share it. And then I straight away said to her, "I said, right, uh, I don't know how much you charge, but I'm booking a session." You know, 
Yeah. Here we go. Here we go. So, uh, Mark, uh, if someone wants to reach out to you, what's uh, the best way to get in touch with you, work with you? You mentioned a podcast. Uh, uh, yeah. Plug away. Look, um, if you're just curious and you want to find out more, if you put Mark Pitcher, that's P-I-T-C-H-E-R, and, or, and smash the box or put those two things together into social media, you'll find me on all the channels. There's a, there's a YouTube channel with tons you know 760 plus videos there um that's where it all ends up uh yeah. all my work um if you want to send me a good old-fashioned email it's mark at smash the box dot me um there is a podcast which is on uh spotify apple everywhere uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, smash the box it's called it, where i interview other people for their stories um i'm on facebook every morning live at 7 45 um I put stuff on LinkedIn, you know, I'm just, yeah, you'll, you'll find so it. Fine. All the links are going to be in the show notes uh, and make sure you subscribe to the podcast. Uh, so then also you can, uh, you can see the interview with Elila. You can see the interview uh, as well that we are going to do uh, later on uh, with me. And that's going to be a great place to start, but all the other social media links, they're going to be in the show notes. So make sure you scroll yeah. down, connect with Mark. Uh, this uh, the reason I'm giving you everything is all it's for you know it's free content i do have a closed so anyone who's thinking no no i want i want a bit more um i have a closed group on facebook called smash the box together which mm -hmm. is also free um it's free right now and you know where i share my morning videos and i do a bit of extra content we do live q a we've got one coming up next wednesday the 13th in the evenings so you know if anything that wants to experience it a little bit more a little bit deeper then that's smash the box together just you know it's all there so the link is going to be in the show notes as well so smash the box together um i think it's important right now to be part of communities to get involved in conversation so it's something i highly recommend to join and um, the reason why we start these interviews and we do these interviews is as a first touch point with a person that you resonate with. The worst thing you can do if you find, if you listen to someone who resonates with, maybe you listen to Mark right now and you say, huh, not my cup of tea. Mm. Yeah. Or maybe you listen to Mark and say, actually, this makes sense. I like his style. Thanks. Then don't let the conversation die here. Make sure you reach out, you get in touch because there is something there for you to explore with that particular person and that particular guest. That's why, that's why we started this podcast, to help you, whoever is listening, connect with incredible people that uh, can uh, be either a small or a big part on your journey, but it can be part of your journey. And it's fantastic that you're doing that, Simone. And I'm the same. I interview other coaches on my podcast and a few people have said to me, Mark, why'd you, you know, why'd you do that? But they, you know, somebody might go with them instead of you. And I'm like, look, sure. You know, <laughs> that will be the right thing. You know, it's every, there's different people, for different things and um, hundred percent I'm with you. It's, it's a fantastic thing you're doing All power to you for doing it. And just, uh, my, my pleasure. That's, okay. that's where we've been going with um, like almost 300 episodes now uh, as the moment of this recording. Wow. Uh, so uh, if, is some is a, is, a, is a project that I absolutely love, and it gave me so much. Just you know, you run a podcast yourself, just in the conversations that you get from people. Yeah. Like I'm learning, and it's a consistent reminders of things. Either I'm learning new things, or things that I I've learned enough I didn't implement, and then it's like, oh wow, okay, let me remind that. So um, it gave me so much, and it gave our listeners so much. So make sure you reach out. So Mark, thank you very much. It's been an absolute pleasure to have you on our show. My, my pleasure. Thanks for having me. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, if you haven't subscribed, make sure you subscribe right now. Also, if you didn't leave a, a review yet, uh, make sure you leave a review. They are important for three reasons. Number one, if you share in the review what you enjoyed on the show, then we can let Mark know about uh, parts of uh, like your feedback. Because we do this interview, we put our heart and soul into it. So it's good to let know our guest uh, uh, what you guys enjoyed. Now, the second reason is also it helps with the ranking on iTunes. Uh, so may leave a review. So the bigger, the, the more we can grow the podcast, uh, the more incredible guests like Mark we can have. And uh, that's the win-win for everyone. And the third reason why, if you don't do it for the first two reasons, then it's good for my ego. Uh, <laughs> I like a good five-star review or <laughs> makes me feel good. So if you want to make me feel good, then leave, leave a bloody review and we're done with that. So <laughs> thank you again very much. Until next time, remember that together we grow exponentially.
Tchau. Tchau.